yeah we'll be speaking about overcoming custom python package hurdles in airflow so yeah let's start so yeah a little bit about us before we actually jump into the session so yeah i'm working as a senior software engineer at cloudera and my most of my time goes in building features around for this product known as cloudera data engineering on the private cloud as yarek already mentioned i'm an apache airflow committer contributing from 2023 So yeah I start I mainly focus on breeze helm charts cncf hive providers and I'm starting to get into scheduler also these days a bit so I'm also a coffee connoisseur so you might have seen me at the table multiple times today so that's that and I love to play sports and uh, stay outdoor also in general Hey everyone my name is Shubham Raj and I'm a software engineer too at Cloudera I work with Cloudera data engineering team we specifically on private cloud I'm also a Airflow contributor. I have spoken last year at the Airflow Summit 2023. It was a great experience. And moreover, on the local summits, and I'm also a published author with book, chapter, and script from publishing. And in free time, I love to play badminton and cricket. So yeah, let's get started. You guys would be wondering who are we, why, what we are going to solve. So yeah, we at Cloudera make data engineers' life easier. I know that's a bold statement, but we do that. So we do it with the help of Cloudera Data Engineering Platform, which is nothing but a data service on top of Cloudera Data Cloudera Stacks, uh, which allows user to submit Airflow and Spark jobs on auto scaling Kubernetes cluster. And a part of that, we also provide a managed Airflow on Kubernetes using Kubernetes executors. And we also have a, a compute unit uh, per team, so which we call as a virtual cluster. And as part of that, uh, there are multiple uh, isolated Airflow. instances for each team and uh, we that share a single uh, metadata and a db and so each virtual cluster is used by per team so the idea is here here is that per team might have some dac code which needs to be shared with the different team so there comes the problem of custom python packages where one team might be using something out of the airflow environment so now before heading towards the decks and all so i will first show you the uh, demo where we are what i will solve try to solve like uh, what we are going to solve or try to tell and uh, let's see what problem comes when we are using uh, python custom python packages so on the screen what you see is a dag file so more importantly before going to the dag file i will tell you like what this dag is nowadays all of you might be following the stock market it's very volatile today so this it's very tedious to be on the screen and see whether the stock price has hit a particular target or not So this DAG uh, does that simple that it will just follow up seeing the stock prices and it will just keep you the email alert whether that has been uh, triggered. And on the line number six on this particular DAG file, it's to notice that we have a YAGML uh, Python package which is uh, available on the public web repo but not on the Airflow environment. What we have, so uh, you can see uh, the DAG here. We have two particular Python operators. which is fetch stock prices and stock alert we also have the the dag goes like first it calls this fetch stock price task then post that it will call the send stock alert task so what it does the fetch stock price what is basically does it takes the stock symbol what you are interested in and it it makes a api call with that particular symbol and api key and what it does it it gets the price particular time and then it push it to the xcom post that when the send stock alert has been triggered what it will do is it will check whether the particular stock has been triggered whatever the price has been set whether it price has been triggered or the threshold has been crossed and notice here is on line number 56 we are using the yml gml why is gml which is smtp protocol it's a wrapper over it and it takes the email id and the password from which you need to send the mail and it sends all to the all the destination mail id is whatever you have fit and when it's successful the you will get the email sent successful otherwise you will get error sending mail so this is all about like the dag file what we are going to run so let's try to run this file i will be using cloudera data engineering platform to run this and on the screen what you see is that the data data engineering home page so let's see we will go to the resources here and there is a stock dag this is the dag file what we have just shown to you so we have uh, uploaded that and now we will try to create a job specifically airflow job let's call it as a stock dag and we will select the resource which is stock dag.py and then we will run let's see what happens okay so now you can see that it's complaining about no module named yagml present 
because it's not there in the Airflow environment. And this problem comes when it's cloud native, cloud native solution on Airflow is deployed on cloud native. Okay, so before heading forward, you might be questioning that why even we need the custom Python package or why is it even needed? So in the DAC code, we usually uses the Airflow libraries also, but sometimes you need to have libraries which are over the public web repos, which needs to be consumed. Or moreover, if you have something on the custom libraries which are hosted on the private web repos, you might, you might need to add it on. Or suppose you have a third party Airflow operators which you need to run. So this all uh, things will not work if uh, you are using a cloud native approach and the problem here will come is that it is not available in the airflow environment and there is no direct way to do this in airflow when deployed in cloud native fashion but yeah of course airflow have some techniques which we can see which is now particularly what airflow offers as per now the first approach is either you can just you we all know that we are familiar with the python path it have the path where all the tags and plugins folder are there either you can just upload your custom packages here or the next approach is either you can just if you have the part to the, your particular custom tag, custom packages you can just uh, append the environment a variable python path and just add it there other uh, third approach is package your code in a python package that is like if you do not want to extend or you don't want to play with the environment variable you can just package it and just pip install it and you are ready to use in your DAG import and you can use that so now i mean if Everything is here what we are solving. So, so there are some challenges on this particular, all the approaches. The challenges are here is that the first, when we talk about the Python path, whatever the folders are there, they are not, uh, they don't reflect at the runtime and ports are immiferal. So they can be destroyed or they can have breakages or they can be restarted. So when it comes to restart it or destroying the, it will go to the default stage. And whatever changes you have made to the Python path environment variable, which is the second option, you're changing, you're appending the Python path, or you're just putting whatever in the DAX folder, it, you will all get lost. That will all get lost, and again, you will face the same problem of not getting no module found. The third is like baking in the Airflow Docker file, recompiling for every change. I mean, this can be done, but it's very tedious to do every time when you are um, having multiple Python packages. So rolling out updates and repeating this might be a tedious task. So yeah. Yeah, so moving ahead, uh, yeah, Shubham did mention a couple of uh, challenges here. So yeah, obviously we need something that can kind of address these problems. So, uh, so we came up with something known as a custom global Python environment. So when I say global here, I mean it is per a compute unit. In our case, it's called a virtual cluster or more generally speaking, it's per deployment of airflow. So this particular solution is offered using a microservice that automates a solution to all these earlier challenges. So essentially the goal of the microservice is quite simple. Whatever we did with the, the last stage of the last slide, which was, which was basically baking in the Docker file and uh, recompiling and all this, this part is kind of automated into a microservice. So it basically builds a global environment for you and this will happen post the installation of Airflow. So this way a microservice basically works in uh, three steps. Uh, the first step is where you define the Python environment that you want to create, uh, then moving on to building the environment and storing it somewhere so we end up storing it in file share and the third step is to actually activate the environment or in simple terms enabling airflow to use the newly activated environment so let's talking in terms of a very simple user flow in terms of what i'm speaking earlier this is like a layman's flowchart of what's actually happening here so the entire solution it goes through a wizard so the first part is we check if the wizard is actually running uh, which is a pretty obvious step and then uh, the initial approach is by checking for presence of the uh, definition of the uh, 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 Python environment to be created. So if it's not present, we go ahead and create it and yeah, move on to the next stage. But if something goes on here, we roll back to the previous stage and we permit a retry if needed. Then once this is done, we actually ask the user to upload a requirements.txt uh, with, with all the custom libraries they want to use in this particular Airflow deployment. So. We ask them to upload it. Once that is done, we go ahead and create the environment. We basically build it and we store it onto the file share. So if everything is fine, we move on to the next stage. But if something goes off again, we go back, roll back. Once this is done, it's pretty linear from here henceforth. So after the portion where the environment has been created and uh, put it into the file share, uh, we ask the user to activate the environment. So activation essentially means enabling Airflow to use the newly created environment. So 
We basically uh, pause all the schedules for the running DAGs. We have a API written for that. We do that, then we basically mount the newly created Python environment onto all the core pods. So it's the Airflow scheduler, the Airflow web server, and in our case, we have an Airflow API server as a wrapper as well. So we do that and we end up activating it. So when we activate it, we obviously perform a restart, but we had made some initial Docker file changes, which will, which will consume the newly activated, sorry, newly mounted environment and activate it. So once it's activated, we, we reach the final stage. If not, we roll back. So once we reach the final stage, assume all the schedules or all the existing DAGs and Airflow is, it's as good to be used as uh, usual. So yeah, moving on to another demo, we will try the same use case which Shubham was trying earlier, but yeah, things didn't work as expected. So we'll, we'll try it with the wizard now. So yeah, moving on ahead, I'll skip to the part where I'm jumping to the wizard here. So yeah, this is our wizard. So yeah, here we initially ask for yeah, the repository configuration. So in my case, I'm using this library called uh, YAGML, which is uh, available on the uh, pypy.org. So I don't really have to do much here. So otherwise, if you had a library which was uh, maybe hosted somewhere else, you can uh, provide in the details like repository URL, the SSL certificates, which are optional, as well as the, the authorization credentials to access the repository. Since I'm good here, I'm just going to click on validate. So I do that, then the wizard asks me to upload the requirements TXT. So I just go ahead and uh, upload that. So if you can see, but if I zoom in a bit, it contains YAGML. So yeah, I'm okay with any version. So I'm just going to upload this here. So if I map, do, map this to the uh, flowchart from earlier, this is basically this is basically the part where you're uploading your requirement TXT and initiating the build. So it takes a couple of minutes. So I'm just, I've just fast forwarded that part. So yeah, at the end of that step, we basically have a Python environment which has been pushed to a file share and we will mount it when we activate it. So the last stage is when I click on activate. So now at the end of this step, we basically have our Airflow deployment enabled with the custom global Python environment which was created. So now that's done. I will just go and try out the use case which Shubham was trying. But yeah, before we do that, I'll jump onto the Airflow UI real quick and just kind of show you the variables that I've set. So my DAG is consuming four variables. So yeah, I, I did collect a couple of email IDs from you guys just before the, just before the session, but yeah, live demo <laughs> doesn't usually work out. So this is a semi live demo. So I fed it into destination email IDs. So that part is done. So I'll just go ahead and kind of try out the same use case what Shubham was trying. So we'll define a job called stock DAG. Yeah, let's select back the same DAG file which he had uploaded earlier. So let's say create and run. Since it had a schedule of none, uh, it's not going to launch. So I'm just going to do run now. So now that I do that, uh, we have a DAG run here. So yeah, you can see that uh, the DAG has been triggered and we can actually jump on real quick to the Airflow UI and uh, see what's happening. So we can see that there is uh, one DAG run here. Uh, it's not filled in the uh, initial parsing stage. So yeah, jumping on ahead here. Uh, yeah, we have one DAG run, which is yeah, I triggered it manually. So it's a manual one and it's already started running. So we are coming back to the logs also. The first stage, which was fetching the stock price for Apple was, yeah, that's successful. So the first stage went through. Let's jump back to the Airflow UI again and we will we'll see what's happening with the DAG. So we can see that the second stage, which is a second task, which is send stock alert has been, it's queued right now. So let's just click on this and we can go to the graph view. Yeah, in the graph view, yeah, it's still in queued. The first one has completed. So yeah, this is the first one. And the second one, okay, it has gone to a running stage now. So the second task, so yeah, okay, it has completed too. So yeah, here we go. So you can observe here that the part where if it actually works, an email would have been sent uh, is but yeah, email sent successfully. So basically it has sent an email to the destination IDs that has been printed in the step above. So this is my email ID. Uh, if I jump on real quick to my email, I can see if it has gone through. So yeah, I just refresh it and I can see a email here. Okay. I can see an email like this. So yeah, I did feed in your guys email as well. So you might uh, get something like this uh, soon or you might have already gotten it, but yeah, this was about using the custom package. So yeah, that worked. So we'll just assume back with the slides. So 
I hope you guys, whoever realized we have collected, you got a response there. And meanwhile, when Amog was doing this, I have just ran the job there. So now coming to the challenges, what we faced is maintaining the stable system at all the times. We are restarting the core components and the stability has to be ensured because if something goes bad, so it should have a proper rollback. We are having a state machine approach which prevents the system crashes and we have a proper rollbacks. So something goes bad, we are again back to the stable system. And in place upgrades, we know that Python and Flow versions change involves and it involves the version upgrades and all. This can break custom Python library and might require updating and rewriting the custom library so that it again works. So now, yeah, we have uh, many things on our plate and uh, the remaining works. We are going to do that backup and restore. We do not want our customer to do it again and again. So we will have the backup and restore so that the same thing should not be done from the customers. And switching away from the file share, we are going to use the cloud native approach, which will have pre-built Docker runtimes, eliminates the latency issues of the file share. And last, the extending the customer custom environments, not just Python, we are going forward with much more and extra dependencies such as jars and binaries and all, we are trying to cover that too. So I think, yeah. Yeah, thank you so much folks. That was all for today's talk.